Bonafide Hustler here, and today I'm gonna to tell you the top five things that I look for at garage sales that make me money. What's going on guys and gals? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from the inside of my kitchen, well, my dining room. And uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna discuss the five items that I look for on every garage sale run, every single Saturday morning. I look for these five items because they're insanely profitable and uh, it's something that you guys and gals should be looking for as well. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. You can also find the free money making guide that'll teach you 50 items in general that you should be looking for at garage sales and thrift stores that will make you money. Go pick up that guide. It's the first link down below. Okay, so an overview of who I am. If you are just finding this channel right now, I have been reselling for over two decades now, okay? I was gonna say 22 years, but over two decades. Let's just say that. And I predominantly find myself at garage sales, thrift stores, those two places. Although I have in the past done swap meets, big box stores, flea markets, pawn shops. Yeah, those kind of things as well. But predominantly here in Austin, Texas now, my business comprises of sourcing from thrift stores, garage sales, um, Facebook Marketplace, and local avenues like that. Now this video is strictly about the things that I look for when I go to garage sales, right? Every Saturday morning, it seems like now for over two decades, I've been going to garage sales as long as I'm not on vacation. Even on vacation, I still sometimes go on Saturdays. But garage sales are a terrific place to find insane deals on items that you can put on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or wherever you want. But yeah, you can usually find really good underpriced items at garage sales. And I like garage sales over thrift stores even more because a lot of times research hasn't been done and so you can get some really crazy deals. And if you have good negotiation tactics, you can get crazy deals even crazier than that. Does that make sense? You can get a great deal and you can even be like, will you take this? And oftentimes the person does. So the very first item that I look for when I'm at a garage sale, um, you would think it would be video games, but those things are typically gone. Like the second that's in an ad, someone's previously emailing them the evening before saying, can I come early? Um, they come an hour early. So video games at one point in my life was a really important thing to look for, but now they're getting so scarce and I think the competition is just really high. So my first item that I look for at garage sales is not actually video games. It is bikes, and bikes are really, really good. If you've watched my channel, you know all about how I love to hustle bikes. They're a lot of fun. And by the way, sidetrack real quick, or a side thought, a lot of these things that I'm gonna talk about right here, I do have guides for. It'll be the second or third link down below. Go check it out. If any of that stuff interests you, and if you wanna get kind of, you know, really up to knowledge on any one of these genres, then there are some guides down below, second or third link, go check it out. So yeah, bikes I look for at garage sales and oftentimes I do find them. I think people are scared with bikes sometimes and especially bikes that are going over 30 bucks. You know, I see a lot of people kind of scared to pull the trigger on those things. How do I know that? Because here in Austin, Texas, where the uh, competition is pretty high, at 10 o'clock or 9.30, I can still see bikes at garage sales every now and then. Um, and that's kind of indicative of, you know, why is that bike sitting there? It's profitable, you can make you money, but I think people just don't have the knowledge of how to flip it. Uh, maybe not, they don't know how to do bike, basic bike maintenance or you know how to change a tube or a tire. So it kind of goes like this to them. And a lot of bikes that I flip, I end up making over $150 in profit on the flip. Does it make sense? So bikes are the very first thing. And when we go down genres of bikes, I look for 24 inch kid bikes a lot. Those are usually really, really good. I look for hybrids. Um, I look for mountain bikes and I look for road bikes. Okay, so there's kind of like four things that I'm looking for, four things. Um, and you can learn more about bikes obviously down below. It's one of the guides down there. Um, but yeah, bikes are really cool. They're used year round in a lot of towns. Um, and if you stick with good brands, then a bike flip is pretty easy to do. So that's the first item. Second item that I look for are shoes, right? Because shoes are oftentimes one of those things, and let's get let's dial it down because I actually look for more boots than shoes, but shoes, basically the covers of your feet, right? Um, I look for those at garage sales all the time because they're oftentimes like one to five bucks. I, I mean, it's just so cheap, and if you know eBay, and if you know your local markets, and if you know, you know, places that you can put them, like I have an antique booth as well, um, I can put boots there all the time, right? I can put logger looking boots, I can put cowboy boots, I can put, you know, hipster style, you know, engineer type boots, I can put all kinds of stuff in there. But, you know, I look for shoes all the time when I'm at garage sales because they're great, they uh, ship pretty compact. Uh, USPS even has 
a shoe box that you, if you ship priority, the shoe box is free, you know? So I use that a lot. Um, but yeah, footwear, sandals, Chaco sandals, um, you know, really cool athletic shoes. I don't try to get into like hype athletic shoes because there's just a high chance of fakes, basically. I look for hiking boots. I look for cowboy boots. Um, I look for really high lace up Doc Martens, Demonia boots, those kind of things. So when I look for shoes, it's not just low cut shoes like you would think would be tennis shoes. It's all the stuff that's footwear. Um, I look for certain things. But yes, the second thing at garage sales that I look for is super profitable. Third item that I look for at garage sales are actually bags. So no surprise, if you watch my channel, you know how I like to flip and resell bags. Now bags are cool because a lot of people don't have these crazy attachments to bags like they do electronics or video games, or even sometimes bicycles, you know? Um, they just don't have the attachment to those things. I don't understand why, but anyway, bags, much like shoes, one to five bucks at garage sales. And you can find some killer, killer deals at garage sales for bags and thrift stores as well. Oftentimes a very severely underpriced item that can make you a lot of money. A lot of times on bags, I typically make north of 80 bucks on every bag flip. That's kind of like where I want to be, although I've gotten down as low as 50. But bags are cool. You know, poly mailers is a way that I get bags, you know, to and from places. Um, I've been known to roll bags and put them in the priority shoe box. Um, and when they're really big, kind of like frame hiking backpacks, for example, then I might use a box. But bags are not hard to ship off. Look for leather type, um, you know, shoulder bags with good brands. Look for duffel bags, really, really important weekender type bags. Backpacks from really great brands. Um, you know, Topo Designs is one that comes to mind pretty quickly. Uh, Chrome, that's another good one. But yeah, bags are great, and uh, I've just been reselling bags now for quite a while. And uh, I think it's a really, really awesome thing to look for at garage sales when you're out there. Number four, all right, number four are going to be jackets. Jackets are pretty good because you can see them from the car, typically when they're hanging up either on the garage door or on some clothesline thing by a tree or something like that. Jackets are hardly ever usually on the floor. They're always, almost always hung up so you can see them from far away. So if you have a situation where you have a lot of garage sales to see, um, you know, jackets are one of those things that you can spot the second that you kind of pull over to the side of the road, you can take a look and be like, okay, I see things hanging up. I see jackets and the jackets that I look for, obviously I have a guide that just came out that is jacket related, but when it comes down to like what I really look for, it's going to be leather jackets, leather, suede, really cool, old retro, uh, you know, in your face kind of graphics, neons. Like I love those type of jackets. Obviously there are, tons of other jackets to resell. But when it comes to like line of sight, something that I'm looking for, I'm looking for things like wax cotton, wax canvas, suede, you know, all leather, goat skin, lamb skin. I'm looking for all this stuff, Carhartt stuff, you know, CC Filson jackets. I'm looking for everything like that. Yeah, jackets are really cool, but with jackets, sometimes you see people going like, oh my gosh, like I remember what I paid for that. So they jack the price a little bit, but there are a lot of times, 80% of the times where jackets are sold one to five bucks as well. So I look for jackets, super profitable at garage sales. The fifth item, the last item that I wanna give you as a tip here that I look for at garage sales here in Austin, Texas. My main avenue to put these things is the vintage antique booth, but there are some on eBay right now as I speak. So and that fifth item are vintage t-shirts. Now vintage t-shirts almost always are not gonna be hung up with jackets or anything like that. A lot of times it's going to be in bins, boxes, on the floor, on a tarp. And so, so sometimes you have to go sifting through to find a cool vintage tee. But here in Austin, Texas, it's not a very special town by any means. I find vintage t-shirts almost every weekend or every other weekend. I'll find something that is single stitch sleeve, you know, um, that has some good subject matter. Um, when it comes to vintage tees, obviously, okay, obviously, you know, pop culture, rock music, awesome movies from back in the 90s and 2000s, all those things in the 80s. Those are going to be definitely the go-tos, um, but there are a lot of other tees <laughs> that are vintage that carry cool resale value, but everything does come down to subject matter. Is it kind of nerdy? Is it kind of dorky? Is it part of pop culture? Um, if you're looking for a general color, okay, color of vintage tee to pop on, you'd start, you want to start with black, you know, black ones are probably where a lot of the cool ones lie. But when we talk about vintage tees, there's also all over prints. There are vintage soccer tees that are almost like all over as well. There's so many cool vintage tees out there. We're talking, you know, Hobie. There's some Bugle Boy stuff. There's just a million different things. Musical bands, amazing movies. I mean, 
God, you know, Levi's, button your shorts, all those things that were in those eras with big blocky crazy colors and big words. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of stuff. And I even pop on things that are just really crazy Daytona type space shuttle, you know, stealth fighter, crazy graphics with neons on it. I love those kind of things too. So anyway, those, that's the fifth thing that I look for when I go to garage sales. I've been doing this for over two decades, okay? And I'm trying to whittle down in my mind, like what are the five best things to start looking for? If you wanna make some money going to garage sales, I would definitely start there and get as knowledgeable as possible on the things I just told you about because that's, when I look back at all the things that I found at garage sales, I would say that those five things have probably carried 60 or 70% of my profit, you know, when it comes to garage sales, like those five genres. So think about it and uh, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, you can find the links to awesome guides down below. I think second or third link, go check it out. Um, but yeah, you're gonna find me every Saturday. Say hi to me if you see me in Austin, Texas, out and about. Don't be a stranger and go make that cheddar. I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Goodbye.